Hey everybody, this is Mr. Townsend with a Monday Minute. I'm hoping to try to utilize YouTube um, as a form of communication to parents and students and community members. So um, from now on, if you desire, go ahead and uh, tune into our YouTube channel. This is new to me, so we'll see how it goes and try to do the best we can. For this first Monday Minute, I uh, just wanted to go over a few things here at the school. Uh, to relay some information to parents and students. So if you're a student or a parent, I guess, uh, maybe get your student and have them come and sit down and uh, watch this with you or have them tune in and check it out later at their own convenience. But um, I think there's some information that I'm going to go over that'll be beneficial to the parent and the student. Maybe a lot of questions out there on how things are going to start here in the fall for school. And um, hopefully I can answer some of those questions in this presentation. First of all, I just wanted to make sure everybody um, utilizes Facebook if you have it. Um, go on and like the school Facebook page. I put a lot of updates on there. Also the school website, www.fairmount.k12.nd.us. Um, on the school website, I have a page dedicated to COVID-19 and the fall 2020 reopening. Um, and you'll find a lot of resources there. Um, and part of that is what I'm gonna go over today is our restart plan. Um, some of you may have seen this. Um, it's on the school website. And um, there's t uh, some information in there. And today I would like to try to kind of go through that and explain a few things. Maybe there's some questions on it. And also, I've been working on a daily operation plan, I'm calling it. Uh, this will be for kind of the daily routine. When, what school? What is school going to look like when we're actually in session? So to begin with, um, looking at the restart plan, first of all, on page two, I want to point out that this is a living and breathing document. Uh, what we mean by that is that this document can and probably will change as we go through this process. Obviously, this is new to everybody. And so it's something that as things develop, this could change this plan. And if it does, you will be notified and the plan will always be up to date on the school website. Every school is uh, supposed to list a COVID-19 building level coordinator for our school district. It'll be uh, Mr. Brian Nelson, our superintendent. Uh, he will be in close contact with the North Dakota Department of Health um, and the county health throughout this process. And then I am his backup. So if he needs help with anything, I'm there to uh, be there. But his main job will be to coordinate with the health officials and also the state superintendent of instruction in our state. One of the things that I want to communicate to parents and staff are the phases of learning that we're going to have. That's in the plan, and that starts on page four. Also, I want to point out something on, on, on this page four that needs to be clarified. The state issues a level that we're at right now. Um, we're in green as a state. If you go to the North Dakota Department of Health, and click on, there's a link there for COVID-19, you will see a little odometer reading. And on that odometer reading, it'll have a little needle that says where we are to, as a state. Um, in the reopening plan, the state, um, where the state is at, that is a broad spectrum obviously you know like there's different spots in the state there that are hot spots bismarck fargo uh, they have a lot more cases than we do here in richland county so the point that i'm trying to make here is no matter what phase we are in as a state our county or even our school district could be in a different phase as we see fit working with county health or the state health maybe there's a huge or a big outbreak in richland county um, that doesn't mean, and the state's still in green, but we see that there's an outbreak in our county. Um, that could sway us on which phase we will be in as a school. Hope that makes sense. So right now as a school district and as a state, 
um, we're in the green. According to the restart plan, our green phase is traditional learning. So what that means is, is it'll be in person with some modifications. Uh, we're gonna be doing several things to help keep the safety of not only the, you know, the students, but also the staff that are working here. So right now we're in the traditional learning phase, which is the green phase, which is in person. How that's going to operate, I will go over later in my daily operation plan. However, if we move to a yellow phase as a school district or even as a county, or maybe the state, the governor issues that we all should go to a yellow phase or the state goes to yellow, that means that we potentially go, could go to yellow. Or maybe not. Maybe the whole state's yellow, but we hardly see anything down here in Richland County. And as you've probably seen on the news, there's other counties that have very minimal cases. Um, so maybe we still stay in green. So it's all uh, a lot of moving parts here. But that's why um, I have this YouTube, um, Facebook, website, calling system. I forgot to mention that earlier. If you're not signed up for the school calling system or you're not receiving our calls, I've sent out two or three, I think, already now. If you're not getting those, you need to call the school and make sure we have a number where you're receiving calls because that is a form of communication I'm using also. But if we move to yellow as a district, that means that we're going to be in a hybrid phase. It's going to be a modified schedule. And we're going to have certain students in the building at certain times. What I mean by that is uh, we're looking at maybe 50% of the students on Mondays and Wednesdays and then a different group of students, the other 50% on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then Friday, we would like to work with uh, certain groups. Um, as I put in here, find it. Uh, that'll, that'll come later. I have it later in the model here. Um, the hybrid, I'll go over that more. But on Fridays will be some staff development. Uh, working with certain groups, potentially maybe there's some kids that are behind. Maybe we'll have them come in on Friday. Maybe there's some kids that are doing credit recovery classes. Maybe they could come in on Friday and do a lot of work on credit recovery. There's a lot of wiggle worm on that Friday. But um, So a yellow phase is hybrid. And then if we get into red, that means that it'll be completely distance learning off campus, kind of like we did basically last spring except it's going to be a little bit more intense and more live um, so in the spring we went through um, a distance learning plan and a dis the way we distance learned especially in the upper levels if we end up going into that distant learning plan it's going to be look a little different where it be more routine and more live interaction between staff and students and that's something that the staff and I'll be working on in case we get to that point. Um, just some health and safety guidelines that were in the restart plan. Um, we're gonna really push washing hands a lot, hand sanitizer, um, avoid close contact with others, um, covering coughs and sneezes. We're gonna clean and disinfect the building every day as much as possible, especially areas where we know there's high traffic, um, doorknobs, desks, um, areas, uh, light switches, things like that. And then <clears throat> one of the things that's that on page six of the restart plan is our face coverings or face masks. Um, and so hopefully this can provide some clarification for some parents on this that are wondering or maybe have con some, some concerns on that. We are going to require individuals to wear face coverings when social distancing is not an option. What that means is, and I went around every classroom with a tape measure, and it's doable. We can have desks six feet apart, north and south, east and west, a halo around kids, if you will, six feet apart, 360 degrees. So in that situation, when staff and students are in the classroom and the desks are six feet apart, um, they do not need to wear the face covering. If there's a situation where a student wants to go up and talk to a teacher and they're two to three feet apart, student would move a mask up, teacher would make sure they have their mask down, they could communicate, still trying to maintain six feet. Once the student goes back down and sits down, they can maybe move their 
covering off and continue. But we will require um, coverings in the hallways uh, or any time in, in lines, lunch line, things like that, which we'll get into more detail later. But so if we're in the green, that's what we're requiring. Now, if you are on a bus, um, they're required all the time because we can't social distance on the bus for the driver and the students. Face coverings are required on the bus. Okay, now if you have any questions on face coverings or how that's going to operate or you want more detail, please give me a call here at the school. Now if we end up moving to yellow, the hybrid learning, that means that things are getting, we're seeing more and more cases in Richland County, then we are going to require face coverings while at school. And as a district, we're going to work with that potentially look at maybe some face mask breaks where, so they're not wearing them the whole day. I know when I go to Walmart or Costco or whatever and I'm wearing my face covering the whole time, I get a sore throat. I'm not used to it. I'm getting better now, actually. But we understand that it's not comfortable for some kids or staff to wear coverings the whole day. So um, if we do get to that hybrid learning or that yellow stage, um, we will look at ways we can accommodate that so they're not having to wear the mask the whole day. But at the same time, if we're seeing an increase in the county or the city, um, then we want to make sure we keep everybody safe. So that's why we are going to require face masks. Okay. Um, we really need help from you guys, from the parents, on health checks. Um, so if you have a child that isn't feeling well, please do not send them to school. Um, for this plan, a fever is considered a temperature of 100.4 or higher. But if you're seeing some of the symptoms we've listed in here with the cough, fever, shortness of breath, fatigue, sore throat, things like that, um, please call the school and don't send your child. Another thing that will happen, though, is that everybody, upon entering the building, will have their temperature checked in the morning at the door. Um, we're we're going to try to spread that out. So potentially, um, certain grade levels will enter the building at certain doors where we can do the temp checks, uh, depending on how many individuals we have a available to take the temperatures. And you'll get more information on that before school starts. But every staff member and student or anybody in the building will have their temperature taken, taken daily. I was going to say checked, but daily. And, and, and if they are showing that they have a temp, then they will be um, isolated and we will call the parent to come get them. I sent out a call and there's an online form on our website that right now we're going to be in person, but as a family, um, if you want to opt out for distance learning rather than being in person, I need to know by this Wednesday, the 12th. <clears throat> um, families that choose this option, we're going to have them commit to a whole semester. So if you want your child to be educated distant then it's going to be for one semester. For students in grades 6 through 12, if you do this, if you elect the distant learning option, we are, as a district, we are going to utilize the North Dakota Center for Distance Education and sign up students through that platform to take classes. So what this means is, is that those students that do that will have teachers out of Fargo teaching them, not our staff. Our staff will continue to educate. This is for students in grades 6 through 12, the students here on site. But if you elect to do that distance learning option, it'll be um, the North Dakota Center of Distance Ed. I will be able to log in and see progress and all that stuff. Um, you as a parent can do that too, and you'll also get email updates on classes. Um, we've used it for other 
um, students for credit recovery, or if they want to take a certain class, we've used a center of distance ed. But I just want to make that clear for students in grades 6 through 12, that is the option that we will use. And students in grade K through 5, we are looking at a LMS, it's called a learning management system for teachers in K through 5 uh, to communicate assignments to students. And we're still working that through that process. Um, so I don't know if you looked at the restart plan for the guidelines, but um, I'm on page 8 right now. And let's say your child does test positive or was diagnosed for COVID-19. They're going to be required to self-isolate for 10 days from when they started getting symptoms. Or if they didn't have any symptoms, but they still tested positive, then we're going to go 10 days from the date of the test. After that 10 days, they need to be uh, have no symptoms for 72 hours. Also, um, other students or people in that family will need to quarantine during that time. So if I have uh, two students that are brother and sister, the one that has the virus would be in isolation. The other child or other student would also have to quarantine. And also, um, anybody that was in close contact with them would also need to quarantine for 14 days. So you can see where this is kind of going if we have a classroom where there's a case, that whole classroom basically, especially in the elementary, K through six, um, you were in close contact with them, um, we would need to quarantine for 14 days. Uh, let's say a student becomes sick during school. I'm actually in the room right now that we are calling the sick room. So if a student is feels sick and has any of these symptoms, fever, throwing up, coughing, fatigue, just doesn't feel good, um, they would come to this room and uh, we would contact the parent to come and get them. Uh, also, if there is a case in the community or the school, especially the school, uh, we will really work with the North Dakota Department of Health and the County Health Department on the steps we need to take on how to deal with that. Um, like I'll give an example earlier with if somebody has it in a classroom, we're basically gonna have to shut down that classroom for the day and clean it. But also anybody that was in close contact with that individual would have to quarantine for 14 days. That would be students and teacher teachers close contact so um, the stuff that we're going to have to be aware of and plan for and hopefully that we never have to use it and then let's say we get another case back to back and we have a couple cases within 14 days you know um, again we would work with county and state health to figure out what we need to do in those situations uh, if you're riding the bus, you'll have your temperature taken before you get on the bus. Just a heads up on that. And then, like I said before, on busing, masks are required for all students and the driver. So when you look at an operational guide on page 11 in the green, and I kind of can, at this point, maybe get into the daily operation on what things will look like. Um, first of all, before we had the before school program and the gym, that um, has been eliminated because at times we had 20, 30 kids in the gym. And so we want to try to isolate kids. So we will st still provide breakfast. Um, we are able to social distance in the lunchroom and have up to 15 to 17 kids. And also we were looking at if there was any more than that, we do have a classroom close to the lunchroom where we could have some kids using the lunch room or the to, to, to eat breakfast for lunch. And also we were looking at the gymnasium and the bleachers, especially the older kids potentially, 
they could social, you know, be social distance there. Again, just a reminder, we would do temp checks upon entering the building. Hallways, we're gonna have to be strategic with lockers so kids aren't bunched in together and with, you know, with lockers. So we're gonna have to develop a plan there where they're not all at lockers at the same time. Um, and also lockers may not be in, traditionally I've done seniors all the way down to seventh grade. Now they might be more grouped with family. So if I have some lockers that are close to kids that I know that are in the same family, then I know that those kids have already been around each other. We're gonna keep classroom doors open as much as possible to help with the airflow. And then mask will be worn in the hallway. So if a student needs to use the restroom or if they're an elementary student and they're going from classroom to gym, they'll wear a mask. Anytime we're in the hallway, going to lunch, six feet apart if we're in lines with a mask. Okay, bathrooms. One of the th we're looking at with the bathrooms is kindergarten already has their bathroom. Uh, first, second, and third have a bathroom by their room. They're gonna utilize that. Uh, fourth grade through 12th grade, um, there's a bathroom by the gym. We're gonna have fourth through 12th grade students use that bathroom. And then faculty will use the bathroom down by the music room, if you know where that's at. Why are we doing it that way? Well, then we can contact, contact trace or know where kids have been. So, um, for example, if Jimmy's in, pretend student named Jimmy's in kindergarten, and I know he's been in the kindergarten bathroom and the classroom, and he's got sick and potentially got COVID, then we would know that he would been in the kindergarten bathroom and his classroom and we can isolate and know where he was at. And we can contact trace where that individual was at, if that makes sense. Bathrooms will be cleaned as much as possible, especially high contact surfaces, faucets, um, handles, things like that. Uh, we're gonna put floor markings so kids can know when they're in there. If there's two in there at a time, they're gonna be six feet apart. Um, we're going to try to work, so especially on the high school end, that we don't have so many kids using the bathroom at the same time, where there's going to be a lot of kids in the bathroom. Again, bathroom doors, we'll try to keep those open, which they are already, to help airflow. And then again, masks must be worn in the bathroom and in the hallway. Uh, you're probably wondering about gym class. Um, from the guidance that we got from the state on that is um, to try to still stay six feet apart if you're gonna do any type of activity where they're not six feet apart, uh, then we're looking at wearing masks during those activities. But um, we're gonna have hand sanitizer available. Uh, if students, we're gonna, I'm gonna be strategic um, on locker rooms. If they are gonna use, utilize that, we might have to only have allow so many in the locker room at a time to change. And then again, if they're in the locker room, we're gonna require them to wear face masks. We're gonna limit the use of equipment and whatever equipment we do use, we're gonna to need to sanitize. Again, have students wash hands after class and before and hand sanitize as much as possible. Um, for gym class, we highly recommend it to go outside if possible. They say it's better outside, so we're gonna look at that. Um, and speaking outside, the other thing is recess. Uh, we're gonna to try to group them in the elementary each day on a rotation. So maybe one day uh, the kindergarten will be out in the basketball courts, and first, second might be on the gym, on the playground equipment, and maybe third grade is over in the grass. So we're gonna to try to keep them in their classrooms as much as possible because we know that they've been around those kids already and try to rotate different areas so we don't have big groups of kids together. Um, and then again, uh, we're looking at what's called a non-rinsable disinfectant, if I can find it, for playground equipment to spray on there to help disinfect the playground equipment. 
um, potentially wiping down high traffic areas as much as we can. Um, same with music, um, elementary music. We're gonna try to space out the music room so they're six feet apart. Hand sanitize as much as possible. If they do need to get somewhat close, we're gonna, they're gonna have to wear a mask. Um, again, with that, maybe potentially they could go outside here, weather permitting. Uh, to do some stuff. Um, no pet ban this fall. The Region 1 athletic directors said no pet ban for that. High school, same thing for music. Um, we're going to try to create an environment, and if the music room is, we feel too cramped, uh, we potentially can move, move, have kids move down to the gym and utilize the gym for band so we can get them six feet apart. Um, I tell you, you know, Fairmount for gym or for music, we have 25 kids. I can't imagine a Wapiton or a Fargo or some of the schools throughout the state trying to deal with um, music and gym, you know, music class um, with that. So, um, but we're still looking at some resources and some guidance from the state on that. I still have not heard anything on one act play. If you're wondering about the one act play, it just popped into my head because I looked down and saw that. Uh, transportation, again, um, went over that already. So food service or lunchtime, obviously we're going to highly recommend and have the kids hand wash, especially in elementary, which they always do this anyways. They hand wash before they go down. And sanitizers available there too. Um, they're going to wear masks on the way down to, to the lunchroom. <clears throat> we're going to wipe down the tables between groups. We're gonna have we're gonna look at having the K through three students eat in the lunchroom, obviously six feet apart. Um, four through twelve, we're looking at having them take their tray back to the classroom, where they because we know the desks there are six feet apart, and, can, and they can be socially distant there. Um, and then we're gonna try to space them out a little bit so we don't have so many kids waiting in line, and so it'll be seamless. Um, and we can get through the, the, everything will be put on the tray by the, by the food service gals. Um, students will not touch anything on anything on the food line, if you will. No self-service, I guess is what we're calling it. No sharing. Um, and we're going to have it marked on the floor, six feet apart in line. Staff will, will hand students the milk. Only kitchen staff will handle silverware, condiments. They'll pass the tray down, and then the student will get the final tray. Students are, can bring their own lunch. However, in, in my plan here, they cannot use microwaves or warm up food, so keep that in mind. Um, so that's food service. When working with the food service gals, we've already talked how it's going to be um, something that we're going to adjust every day to make it to get better and better at what we're doing to make sure everybody's safe. <clears throat> Guests and visitors. Um, at this time, what we're looking at is non-essential guests will not enter the building unless, unless authorized by myself or Mr. Uh, Nelson. Um, we'll hold virtual meetings as much as possible. This is Gbro in the office. We'll have plexiglass. All doors will be locked. The only way you'll be able to get in is through the front. Um, we're going to try to limit as many outside groups in the building as we can after hours. Not a lot of people use the school after hours as is, so I don't think that's going to be a big deal. Um, if a visitor is absolutely needed, they're going to need to stop in the office. Make sure they wear a mask while we're there. They're going to we'll take their temp like you do when you go into. I went to the dentist the other day. They took my temp, things like that. Uh, there's not going to be a back-to-school night this year. And then as parents, um, are, we're, we want you not in the building um, unless it's absolutely necessary. But if you need to talk to a staff member, we're recommending either virtual through like a Zoom meeting or a phone call. 
if you're picking a child up, call us and we'll escort the student out the building. All doors will be locked at one time and then inside the office, uh, we're gonna only limit one person in that inside the office at a time for social distancing. Um, Parent-teacher conferences, we'll evaluate that when we get closer to it. But staff will be encouraged to try to reach out to parents more this fall throughout the school year. And then if you have a student that's on an IEP, um, we'll work with our special ed unit on recommendations on how to hold IEP meetings. Last year we did them, several of them virtually and I thought they went okay. So I think it's doable that way too. Uh, when students are dismissed, we're gonna try to stagger it so we don't have tons and tons of people leaving and I call it a bottleneck or congregating in one area. And staff will be out in the hallways trying to keep kids moving and get kids um, so we don't have so many kids in a group. No field trips at this time for staff, so it'll just be a virtual field trip if we're going to do anything. Some broad overviews for classrooms. Students and staff stay home if they're sick. Uh, mask required when social distancing isn't possible. If we are social distance, they don't need to wear a mask. San hand sanitizer, we're going to have that as, mu as available as much as we can. Um, especially the elementary, and they already do this, but we'll develop where they hand wash as much as they can throughout the day. The custodians will clean daily or as often as possible throughout the day. Like I said again, especially in high areas where we know there's a lot of high contact. Um, staff actually are gonna help clean too throughout the day in those areas too. Uh, we highly recommend that students bring water bottles um, so they don't have to use the water fountains bring a water bottle with water in it. And then we're gonna highly recommend kids don't share supplies, pencils, crayons, whatever, anything, shouldn't share. Uh, we evaluated each classroom. We're gonna really have to look at each classroom and um, some stuff might have to be moved out. This is more for teachers to make room so we can have desks six feet apart. Uh, we recommend we're going to do some assigned seating. So if we do have a classroom that has siblings, um, we could put those students next to each other um, since we know that they've, always, they've already been in close contact. Um, and then classes are encouraged to go outside or take breaks. Um, hopefully this fall we'll have some nice weather and we won't be inside all the time. Maybe go outside and do a lesson outside. Again, just to touch on the yellow phase, the hybrid. Um, again, if we get to that phase, you will be notified and um, we will go from there. And then if we ever do get to red, which is the phase that obviously means that we're just complete distance learning. And again, if we ever get to that point, we will notify you of everything and we have already have a plan developed for distance learning that we created last spring, which we've been working on and updating already for um, if, if distance learning should occur again. Um, that's basically what I wanted to go over. I'm at 33 minutes. I know this is kind of long, but I'm hoping to answer some of your questions on what it'll look like. I guess one of the things I didn't answer that just popped into my head was um, face masks. Um, if you do have a health concern, provide a health note. Um, if you do not want to wear a, a face mask or if you need maybe more breaks on the face mask, um, we're, we'd be more than happy to work with you on that. If you, you have asthma or you have a breathing issue or something where um, behavior wise or if you have challenges wearing a face mask we want to keep you safe while you're here and again if that's an issue please call me and we can talk about it so we can figure that out the best way to keep them safe and at the same time um, make sure they're healthy okay um, 
that is it for me. So I'm right around 35 minutes now. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me and uh, let me know if you have, what questions you do have. Calling system, check on that. And make sure you're on our calling system. Facebook page, make sure you uh, like our Facebook page or go on there and check it out. School website, I continually update that and put resources on there or information. And then now this YouTube, we'll see if this thing worked or if I just wasted 35 minutes. So with that, I uh, hope everybody is staying safe. Uh, look forward to working with the students and staff. Uh, we want to be safe and we want, uh, we're excited to get back into school, but we want to do it right. Um, and I asked, one final thing that I ask for parents and students is that you be patient with us. Um, and through this whole process, uh, the staff worked very hard in the spring. Um, and this fall will be a challenge for staff and students and parents. And our goal is to continue to educate students in a safe way. And I look forward to seeing students and hearing noise out in the hallways. It's been dead quiet here. So with that, thank you for tuning in. Um, I appreciate it and have a good night.